And speaking of mental health, talk to me about negative thoughts and how they affect our self-confidence. So that is, again, another very intertwined relationship that takes time to separate one from the other. And then it's like, what, you know, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. What happens first? Am I anxious because I'm having these negative thoughts? Do I have a low self-esteem because of the negative thoughts? Or am I having the negative thoughts because I have a low self-esteem? It forms these circular patterns almost. And until you're able to interrupt it, it just continues on and on. And then it becomes pervasive where it affects every other aspect of your life, not just how you feel about yourself, but then how you feel about the outside world, how you, how you interact with your friends, with your family members, with your children, with your employers, with, you know, everyone in the world around you. Starting with the negative self-talk or the negative self-statements, those are oftentimes learned and developed in early childhood. And as we grow, They change, of course, but it is so influenced by the world around us and by our upbringing and about our peers and coaches and teachers and the media. And we we get so much input from the outside world. And so a lot of times that becomes ingrained in our our heads and it plays out um, like this reel almost over and over again, like a recording almost saying the same thing over and over. And once you're able to acknowledge, okay, so this is the thought that I'm having. Where is this coming from? Why am I feeling this way? What am I telling myself about this situation? Most of us aren't walking around paying such close attention to our thoughts. We're just feeling our feelings and putting it out there into the world. We're not sitting there thinking, why am I thinking this right now? But the the wonderful thing about this is that once you start paying attention, you can't not notice the influence that your thoughts are having on your feelings. And that is the practice itself, right, Leslie, to become self-aware. I'm wondering if all negative thoughts are connected to negative beliefs or false beliefs. There are times whenever negative thoughts are warranted. There are bad things that happen in the world and there are things that we cannot control. And a lot of times negative thoughts are warranted given the situation. I don't want to dismiss any negative thoughts because that would be taking away from, I think, our normal, healthy way of looking at the world. Because it's not all sunshine and rainbows all the time, of course. The negative thoughts that I speak of in here are more about the negative thoughts that we turn inward, that the negative thoughts about ourselves, about our responsibilities, um, negative thoughts that we have about our physical state, like our appearance, our capabilities, um, about what other people are thinking about us. So in the book, I had an example in there somewhere about a woman feeling like she didn't like her nose. She thought her nose was too big. So that's a negative thought, but that's something that she can't control. So it's about flipping it around into something that's more positive, where she said, my nose is from my grandmother, whom I love more than anything and I adore. So changing it into something that's positive, even though it, it Um, That doesn't take away necessarily from the fact that she feels that she has a big nose, but if she can look at it in a different way, with a different perspective and still love herself through it and accept it, then that's a positive thing, in my opinion. Yeah, and I agree. How did this happen? (laughs) All these negative thoughts we have about ourselves. I know you list lots of them, the nature and the source for these thoughts. The negative thoughts that are learned in childhood. I hear this so much with my clients. And unfortunately, this, in my opinion, this is the most pervasive. This is the one that tends to stay with us longer. Um, It becomes more ingrained into who we think we are. And, you know, all families, all families have rules, right? Some rules are helpful and help keep us safe, but some families have rules that aren't very safe. Some families have rules 
such as, um, oh, it's not safe to talk about these things with other people, or we have to sweep all of this under the rug. Nothing to see here. Everything's good. You know, um, especially in cases where there's abuse going on or there's an alcoholic parent or addiction in the family um, or emotionally unavailable parents. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times in those cases, children are going to receive those messages that their feelings aren't important, what they have to say isn't important, and they, they hold everything inside. And rewriting those negative thoughts is the hardest but most rewarding work that somebody can ever do. And that as a therapist, I can ever help someone navigate because again, they're usually very deep seated and go back many, many years, depending on how old, you know, how old you are. So how do you teach women to reverse, to change those thoughts? Well, identifying it is going to be the first step, right? Because unless you realize that that's something that's going on in your head, um, you're not going to know that it needs to be addressed or changed. And I did say this in the book that for these types of thoughts, the thoughts that are the more damaging ones from childhood experiences or from trauma or from abuse or from families with addiction issues, I do not see this book as being something that is a replacement for a therapist, you know, a competent and compassionate therapist who is trained and able to help navigate that process because a lot of feelings will come up, of course, whenever you're talking about such deep rooted and sad and sad things. So the first step is going to be to figure out or help the client figure out what are the thoughts? What is what what are the thoughts here that you were taught? So some of the more common ones that I'll hear, it's not okay to talk about my feelings. Keeping up appearances is more important than being honest. Kind of like that, nothing to see here, everything's good, we're gonna sweep everything under the rug. Or it is not safe to discuss bad things that happen in my family. I must agree with my parents. I am a disappointment. And the one I hear all the time, I have to be the responsible one. That's a big one. And especially for women, because women, to a certain extent, we tend to be caretakers. And whenever we feel like we are responsible for the happiness and well-being of everyone around us, we, at the detriment to ourselves and our own mental health, that's when all those feelings come up, the resentment, the anger, the irritability, the rage. And they don't always, or a lot of times clients can't figure out where it's coming from. And that's what I do. I help them figure out where it's coming from. 